ALL's curriculum committee is very pleased to do a repeat of David Tucker's Webb Telescope course. His course was in such demand last term that we had a wait list. So we are offering it again, and you will be able to view David's wonderful photographs. Welcome, David. So this is a class about uh, the James Webb Space Telescope. And um, the picture on the screen, um, that's it. $10, $10 billion uh, worth of advanced technology. Let's uh, take a look at it and, and um, uh, look at some of the parts. Uh, you can see at the top there are the mirrors. There are 18 sectioned mirrors in there. They're made out of beryllium and gold. And um, um, those are the mirrors that, uh, they're actually a camera. And so they are uh, detecting uh, infrared light and then that light is processed. Um, right below that is a heat shield, six layers of a heat shield. And the reason that heat shield has to be on there is because this telescope detects um, infrared uh, light, which is heat, just like a McDonald's heat lamp. And so we have to block out extra heat from the uh, apparatus and uh, the sun and the moon and earth. We have to block all those things out if we're just trying to pick up um, uh, galaxies and stars and, and so on. So the heat shield is very important. The temperature out there is like a minus uh, 370, 380 degrees Fahrenheit. And so any kinds of heat will cause a problem. Below that are some instruments. Look under those, those uh, uh, heat shield layers and there are um, a couple of boxes that are instruments. There are the infrared cameras and there's a spectrograph that detects that, that takes the light and sorts it out into to see what different kinds of elements are in there. So that's what the device looks like. Now, the reason that uh, JWST was built was because the, the world did not have an infrared telescope. And so um, um, this was a, an exciting time to have this built because um, what happens is when the light from the early universe after the Big Bang, when, when stars and galaxies started to uh, grow and give off their light, Okay, that light was, is traveling through uh, space and time, and it finally reaches us. Um, but in that time, the universe has expanded, and so light that was originally uh, visible light or uh, ultraviolet light or X-rays, uh, those wavelengths are stretched. And... Um, and that process turns it into longer wavelength infrared. So the universe out there is really cool and we never had a way to measure it. And so that's why the um, telescope was built in the first place. Uh, so one of our goal is to piece together everything that's uh, happening in the universe since the Big Bang. See, we had no way of measuring that because we had no way of measuring infrared. And so that's been the goal, to look at early stars and, and galaxies and other objects, black holes, to find out uh, what has happened over time. Another advantage, uh, uh, reason for doing it is uh, any object you know, out in the uh, uh, universe will give off some infrared, like when a new star is born, it will be giving off infrared heat, and this telescope now will be able to pick that up. So um, the last thing I had here on my list, um, let's take a, take a look at some discoveries that have already been made. And the class will uh, emphasize uh, mostly this part of it. I will show you pictures of uh, 
um, stars and galaxies in their, their uh, process and uh, what they're doing. And uh, I'll explain uh, what the images actually show. So some of the things that have already been discovered are uh, one thing, uh, the atmospheres around exoplanets. We're all interested in whether there's life somewhere uh, else in the universe other than on Earth. And we now have identified some atmospheres that have, um, they're called the biosignature uh, chemicals, chemicals necessary for life. Now, that doesn't mean we've identified life, but uh, some of the chemicals are there. We've also spotted one of the earliest galaxies formed at 900 million years after the Big Bang. So that's, that's really shortly after the Big Bang uh, happened. Uh, we've now identified a, a galaxy way back there in time. Uh, we've also identified galaxies, gal they're called cannibalistic galaxies because gravity makes uh, one galaxy uh, combine with another one. They start hitting each other and colliding and then they uh, get all mixed up um, just like our Milky Way. We now know that our Milky Way has gone through two or three or four processes where other galaxies collided with it and uh, changed uh, everything, all the stars and, and so on. So we've identified cannibalistic galaxies and I'll show you some pictures of that process. We have just discovered in the last uh, uh, two weeks a, a protostar, a brand new star that is being uh, uh, formed now. And uh, gravity starts that star to, uh, uh, um, to get the, 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 the gases and the, the dust collide and uh, the star starts to heat up. It's not glowing yet, but uh, infrared heat is being given off. And so we are able to watch a new star born. Uh, we've, uh, uh, we're watching a, a, and a, we can see galaxies from way, way, way back in time uh, through a process called gravitational lensing. The, the gravity around a star bends the light and so it acts just like a lens, your, your eyeglass lenses. And we can now see uh, galaxies way back in time. And uh, it also, we've also identified the death of uh, a star. We we're able to see a star when it goes through its uh, final death uh, throes and turns into a, a, a white dwarf star end stage. So those are some of the things that we'll be looking at. And uh, my real goal in the uh, class is to uh, help you understand um, the, 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 in the pictures of what's going on. The news is covering. Every time one of these new discoveries is being made now, uh, the news is covering the uh, happening very uh, closely, but all they ever do is show you a picture and they really can't uh, explain to you what's going on. And so that's my job. My goal is to uh, uh, make it easier for you to understand exactly what's going on out there. So uh, with that, that's uh, what it'll be. I sure hope uh, uh, folks can find time to um, uh, attend the class uh, because um, some of the pictures are just, just mind boggling what we are now learning about um, the universe and black holes too. So thank you very much.